Hi everybody, this is Bonnie Barger with Bonnie Bay Crochet and I am really, really excited to bring to you the Throw of Grace. Let me go ahead and put some better shots of that right here. The particular verse that inspired me for this design is found in Psalm 16, where it talks about boundaries and limitations and how they have fallen for us in pleasant places and having a beautiful inheritance. And so that's mostly the theme or, or the, the inspirational theme that I went with with designing this. And you can see this has several different colors going from light to dark and this works really well with other color schemes as well if you want to use blues or purples or just use your imagination i think it would also look outstanding in just a single light color should you want to make it more of a monochromatic design well let me go ahead before i show you what you're going to need i need to let you know that this is video number one of a series of three that will be released sequentially week by week and um and i'm really looking forward to seeing your designs too i would love to put together another showcase once this design has completed and you can always send that photo of your beautiful work to me at bonniebay at me.com. I would love to see your work. And if I have your permission, would love to add this to a future video showcase. Well, let me go ahead and show you what you're going to need. Below, you will see a photo of the color palette that I will be using for this. The color starting with color number one, which is the cream color from right to left. This yarn is Cascade Yarns Anthem, which is 100% acrylic, 100 grams or 3.5 ounces, 186 yards or 170 meters per ball. The number of balls that you will need of each color will be listed in the video description below, as well as in the written pattern that is available from my lovecrafts.com store. For this project, you're going to need two crochet hooks, the main gauge hook I will be using will be the I or 9 or 5.50 millimeters. And for the popcorn stitches, you are going to need one size larger. I'll be using a size J or 10 or 6.00 millimeter crochet hook. And as always, I recommend that you have a yarn needle and a pair of sharp scissors handy. One other thing that I highly recommend that's going to be very beneficial for this particular design is if you have at least four stitch markers, we're going to be using these to mark our chain two corners once we get to the low front ridge. If you don't have uh, stitch markers like this, anything that you have, uh, for example, uh, an earring, leftover earrings that have the, the ones that close in a particular way, also work well as makeshift stitch markers or if you have contrasting piece of yarn that you can tie in the corner, that will work as well. To begin, I'm going to use a slip knot and I'm going to chain four and I'm going to make a circle by working a slip stitch in the first chain that we just made and it makes a little circle, little donut or cheerio, as I like to say. Now I'm going to chain two and working only into that center, we're going to work 20 double crochets into the middle of this loop. And as you see, I am working them in such a way that I work over this strand so that once I complete this round, I can just simply trim that loose end and it will be one last strand that I have to hide later. So go ahead and work 20 double crochets. Now that I've completed those 20 double crochets, this would be a good time to go ahead and double check and verify that you have 20 stitches because that is going to be very important going forward. Okay, now we're going to join with a slip stitch 
to the top of that first stitch. And for the record, this chain two does not count as a stitch throughout this project. It just is a chain two. So if I give you a stitch count, I am actually referring to the literal double crochets of the round. We're gonna chain two for round number two. And this is where we begin to make the corners. We're going to work one double crochet in the same place as joining, chain two, and then we're gonna work two double crochets. And again, this does not count as a double crochet. Um, just wanted to be very clear about that going forward. Now we're going to work double crochets in each of the next five stitches. That's two, three, four, and five. Now let me pause a minute just to verify. So we have the corner here, we have the chain two where we joined, or rather continued for round two, and then a double crochet, chain two, and then two double crochets worked in that space, and then one, two, three, four, five stitches, one in each stitch. Now the next stitch, we're going to work another corner. But our corners are gonna be different. After completing those five double crochets, we're going to make another corner. I'm gonna make the corner, then I'll explain what is happening here. We're going to work two double crochets, chain two, and then one double crochet for this corner. Now that may seem odd to you, and the reason is we are going to try to make this side the long side, and then these sides are going to be the short side, and they will have more shape once we finish this round. Okay, so now we're going to double crochet in the next three stitches. One, two, and three. Now it's time for another corner. And for that corner, we make a double crochet in the next stitch, chain two, and then two double crochets worked in that same space. After that, one double crochet in each of the next five stitches. And that is three, four, and five. And let's just verify that we have our corner and then one, two, three, four, five. And now it's time for another corner. And we're going to work two double crochets in the next stitch, chain two, and then one double crochet. And now we're going to work a double crochet in each of the next three stitches. One, two, and three, join with a slip stitch to the top of the first stitch. Again, this does not count in the stitch count at all. I wanna say that again, just because if you use this chain two as a stitch, your stitch count, I guarantee you, will be off and you don't want that to happen. Okay, so let's pause and look at this. You can see that instead of a square, we are forming more of a rectangle. It looks a little, little rounded at this point, but as we go forward, the rounds that we're going to add are going to change that. And let me be very specific on the number of stitches per side as we go. Okay, so on this side, you should have a total of nine stitches here, nine stitches here, that's including the corners, five and five. That gives you a total stitch count of 28 double crochets and four chain two corners. Okay, for round number three, we're going to slip stitch to the chain two corner, chain two, and we're going to work one double crochet, chain two, and then two double crochets, one, two, and now we're going to begin front and back post stitches. So we're going to start with a front post double crochet followed by a back post double crochet. If you've never worked front or back post, don't be afraid of these. Instead of working in through the top, they're actually easier. We just wrap our hook like we're going to work a double crochet and the hook 
goes around the body of the stitch like you're giving it a belt and then you complete the stitch as normal. That's a front post. For a back post, you come in the back door. Okay, coming in the back side of the stitch and the hook goes around the body and goes back out the back door and then you complete the stitch on the back side. It's as easy as that and don't be afraid of just jumping in and giving it a try. So after working these all the way across, we are working every stitch across. By the way, we're not you know, omitting the first or the last stitch. We are working them all as we work in the round. Now keep in mind which is the long side. So we are working the long side of this rectangle here. So we're going to work two double crochets for this corner chain two, turn, and then another double crochet in that same space, but just one because now we are working along the shorter side. And again, we're going to work those front, alternating front and back post double crochets across this side. I'm going to work this with you around the entire uh, square because I want to make sure that you understand it. But once I do this, I'm going to give an assignment. Okay, so now we're going to work this corner. And again, we're still on the short side. So we work one double crochet in that chain two space and then chain two, one, two. And now we're working along the long side. So we're going to work two double crochets. This is a way to keep this side longer then the short side. Now we're going to work again, front and back post double crochets. So go ahead and work these until you get to the next corner, alternating front and back post. After working those across, now remember you are on the long side. And if you're not sure, you can just always take a moment and step back and look at this. Just count the number of stitches so you should have more stitches on the long sides. Chain two and then one double crochet in that same chain two space. And now we just have five more stitches, front post and back post, alternating that along this last side. That's three and four. Okay, now this is very, very important. As you round the corner, to the last stitch, we have the chain and the double crochet. If you're going to make a mistake in the stitch count, it would be because you work a stitch around the turning chain. We don't want to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we are going to work around the turning chain and the last stitch at the same time, just like that. It's very important. You're going to have to do it this way at the end of each of these rounds for the center portion. And then we're going to join with a slip stitch. And you can take a look at what we have. Notice that I am not turning at the end of each round, but I am continuing on to the next. That's not going to be the case throughout the entire project, but it is for this section. Okay, so now for round number four, we're going to work a slip stitch to the chain two corner chain two. And again, this is the short side. So we're going to work a double crochet chain two, and then we're going to work two double crochets. Since now we are working along the long side and then we bring in, um, we're going to start with a front post double crochet, but as you add these stitches, just make sure that it alternates. It so you're going to work a front post here. So that means this will be a back post and this will be a front post. So we'll start with the front post. And the reason I say that is this is going to change on the shorter ends as we progress. So I'm going to go ahead and work these alternating front and back post double crochets across to the next corner. After working over all these stitches, still 
on the long side, I'm going to add two double crochets in the corner, chain two, and I've turned 90 degrees, and work another double crochet, but just one. Now this is where it's going to get tricky. Now you have a front post here, so this next stitch is going to be a back post. So for this short side of this round, we are going to start with a back post double crochet for the short side of the rectangle and then a front post. And the reason that we are having to change by starting that with a back post instead of a front post is because we're adding an odd number. We're just adding one stitch to this side, but since we're adding an even number to this side, you can maintain you know, working by starting a front post instead of a back post. I'm not trying to make this extra difficult, but you do have to pay attention so that you keep the pattern consistent. Okay, and then we're going to end with a back post along that edge. Now we're going to work one double crochet, chain two, and then working along the long end again, two double crochets to form that corner. And again, we have a front post, so that will be a back post, and this will be a front post, so we go ahead and start with the front post. Just looking at it going backwards just helps to know what you need to do for the next part. So I'm going to go ahead and work these alternating front and back posts until I get to the next corner. Now that we've gone to the corner, we're going to work two double crochets, chain two, and turn, and then one double crochet for that corner. Again, the two double crochets because of the long side of the rectangle, and then one double crochet for the short side. And again, that was a front post, this will be a back post. So we start this edge with a back post. Okay, and then five, and six, and then once again, we come to where the chain two, and our last stitch are side by side, and we're going to work a back post over both of those. Make sure you do not work a stitch over that chain, turning chain, because that will, again, make your count inaccurate. And then slip stitch to the first stitch of the round. So this is what you have after four rounds. Just to be clear, the stitch count at the end of round four, you should have nine stitches across this side and you should have 17 stitches across the long sides. And that gives you a total of 52 stitches plus the four chain two corners. Now we're going to work three more rows, just like I've shown you here. And each time you're going to add one extra double crochet in the chain two corner for the short sides and two for the long sides. Now, as you work, the short side, be mindful that as you begin round number five, you'll be working in this stitch. So you'll start round five with a front post. Round six, we'll start with the back post. And round seven, we'll start with the front post on the short side. The long sides, each side, since you're adding two at the beginning of each, will always begin with a front post double crochet just by nature of adding even numbers to these stitch counts. Once you complete round number seven, um, you should have a total of 15 stitches on the short side, and you should have 29 stitches on the long sides, giving you a total of 88 stitches in all. If you want to look for the specific stitches row by or round by round, um, you can check the written pattern for that information. This is what you should have after completing seven rounds. Now we are going to continue, but in a slightly different way. Let me explain and then I will start you on round number eight. We are going to continue working the front and the back post, 
but we are going to change the number of stitches in the corner. We are going to change to working half double crochets in the corners, in the chain two corners, and we're only gonna put one half double, chain two, one half double. And I'll go ahead and start with that now so that you understand what's happening. So for round number eight, and this is what we're going to do for rounds eight, nine, 10, and 11. So four rounds made in this fashion chain two. I've already gone ahead and slip stitched to the chain two corner. And then we're going to work a half double crochet. Very important. This is a shorter stitch. Chain two. And we're going to turn to work along the long side, but we are only going to be working one half double crochet. So the corners are going to be changing. Okay, now we're going to work a front post and a back post. And you're gonna alternate that all the way across, just like we've been doing. Now on the repeats of this, when we begin round nine, you are going to be beginning, you are going to start rather with a back post along the long side because now we are only adding in an odd number. So you just have to pay attention whether you start with a front or a back post on every side of the square or rectangle going forward. So I'll go ahead and work this to the next corner. Once we get to the corner, again, a half double crochet, chain two, and then again, another half double crochet. Again, just, I know I'm repeating myself, but I just want to make very, make this very clear that we are back to just one half double, chain two, half double for these corners. Now working along the short side and we have a front post here. So this must be a back post. So we'll start with a back post, double crochet and then front post. So go ahead and work this all the way around for round eight. And then I will show you how to begin round number nine. Now we're at the end of round eight and I just wanted to point out one more time that this is the chain two. Do not work a separate stitch around this, but join this with the last stitch here. And we're gonna work those together in that back post double crochet. Join with a slip stitch to the first stitch of the round and then go ahead and slip stitch to that chain two space once again. And for round, well, before I show you round nine, let's go ahead and take a look at what we have here. So now at the end of round eight, you should have 17 stitches on the short sides and 31 stitches along the long side. The total count for the stitches is 96 stitches plus the four chain two corners. Okay, for round nine, 10, and 11, it's going to be done in the same way with the chain two, and we're just sticking to one half double crochet on each side for the chain two corner. And then again, like I said before, you have to be careful how you start this. This was the front post, so this must be a back post. So this side starts with a back post, etc. So go ahead and work rounds nine, 10, and 11 in the same manner. This is what you should have after completing 11 rows. And you should have 23 stitches across the short sides, and you should have 37 stitches across the long side. Okay, so now we are ready to begin row number 12 and we are going to do something different with this. Go ahead and slip stitch to the corner, chain one, and we're going to work single crochets. Single crochet in this corner, chain two, turn 90 degrees and work another single crochet. And this is what we're going to do for all the corners and simply work a stitch in each stitch across. Now, as I, as you do this, notice that I pulled this back a little bit because that first stitch, the two loops 
can sometimes get covered up by these single crochets. So make sure that you don't omit the first stitch because that is going to mess up the stitch count if you do. So make sure that you use, you crochet in the top of that first stitch and then each stitch all the way across and around when you get to the next chain two corner. Again, it's just single crochet, chain two, single crochet. And then I will show you the join at the end of this round. Now, as we get ready to finish round 12, I just wanted to again point out, this is the turning chain and here is a stitch. So you can put your next single crochet there. Make sure you don't add in an additional single crochet by mistake because of that turning chain and go ahead and make a join with a slip stitch in that stitch. So now we're ready to go on to rows 13 and 14. We're going to chain one and I am going to turn. This is the first time I believe we have turned in this entire project. So just do pay attention to the turning as well because some rows we will turn at the end and some rows we will not. And I'll try to be very specific in the written pattern and the verbal instructions in this video. Okay, I've gone ahead and I do have one chain. Now this is very similar to the low front ridge except this is called the low back ridge and or low back rib. Either, either of those words have been used for this stitch. And we're going to skip the first stitch here and then we're going to go to the next stitch and we're going to work a slip stitch. Um, don't worry about the stitch count on this. It's essentially going to be the same as the stitch count of the last stitch. Um, but what's going to count the most is the stitch count on the row that comes or the round that comes after this. This is mostly a decorative round. No stitches will be added. Okay, so we are going to work slip stitches working in the back ridge or the back loop only. Okay, this is a little different, but very, very doable. So just work slip stitches all the way until you get to the corner. And actually, let me stop right here and do one thing before we get to those corners. And let's go ahead right now and get your stitch markers and mark all four of the corners like this. I promise you'll thank me later for this because if we don't mark these, I know it's going to be a little more difficult to find these chain two corners once we've worked in the stitches surrounding them, which is what we're doing this round. Okay. Okay, so I have all of the corners marked with with the stitches, or the slip, uh, stitch markers rather. Okay, so now we're just gonna get back to this and I am going to continue working these slip stitches in the back loop only. So go ahead and do that until you get to the corner and then I'll show you how to proceed from there. All right, I am near the corner and this is the last stitch that I'm going to work in with the slip stitches on this side. I'm going to completely skip this chain too. I'm not going to work in it at all. I am going to work in that on the next round. But what we're going to do here is we're going to go right from this last single, single, I'm sorry, slip stitch in that single crochet. And we're going to go to the next one right over here, which is the first one along the next side. So you can see now why I wanted you to mark these because otherwise they are nearly impossible to find. All right, so go ahead and slip stitch in each stitch using the back loop only until you get to the next corner and we will do this again. Before we do, let's just take a look at how this looks in the front and you can see how this curves towards the front. This will be 
easier to see once we finish round 14 as well. Now I'm approaching the next corner and this is that last single crochet and I'm going to skip the chain two corner and go right to the next single crochet which is right there. Let me just show you the front side. So it's right here and that's the next loop. I'm going to work that slip stitch in just like that and then we just continue on around working in that back loop. So go ahead and continue around the other two sides of this rectangle and I will show you how to join this and begin the next round. After working this all the way around, and I have worked my last slip stitch in the last single crochet along that side. And so what I'm going to do now is locate the very first, actually this is the chain one where we started, and go ahead and do a slip stitch. And after that, we are going to turn. And we now have the front side facing us again, and you can chain one. And then working in the chain two, right back here, where it is marked with the stitch marker, and that is what's gonna help you find it. We're gonna work a single crochet, chain two, and another single crochet in that chain two space so that we have our corner and we can go ahead and remove this stitch marker. And then working along the long side, we are going to find the single crochet. Let's go ahead and find it. It's right here. And so here is the loop for that. This is the remaining loop that we did not work in, opposite of the loop that we worked in here. I know this is a little tricky to see. If you locate the stitch, then you can see the back side right there. Or actually, let's look at the back side this way. We worked in this stitch and then this stitch and then you can see the next loop. The next loop is going to be here and then here and then here. Okay, all the way around. I know sometimes these are very, can be a little tricky to see, but if you want to look at the stitch from the back side, you might be able to find it more readily. You want to make sure that you're not working in these loops because this is what is giving us that nice surface texture and to help define uh, the texture on this project. Okay, so we're just working single crochets in that remaining loop. Let me just let you take a look at this again. You can see that it is the remaining loop of that single crochet. I want to be very deliberate here because I know this is probably going to be the rounds that trip people up. And I want to make sure that you have very clear instructions. So this is what it should look like as you go around. So I'm going to go ahead and work this to the corner and then I will show you how to work the next corner. So after working to the next corner and let me show you the back side so that you see the next thing that I have is the chain two which is marked clearly with the stitch marker and now we're going to work another corner which is a single crochet, chain two, and another single crochet in that same chain two corner. Let's go ahead and remove our stitch marker since it has completed its job for this round. And I'm just going to continue this all the way around, finding out where that next single crochet is. And again, look at the back. If you see the back side of this single crochet, and you see the loop right on top right there. So go ahead and finish this and I will show you the join at the end of this round. Let's go ahead and before we do that let me just go ahead and show you how this is looking. You can see that nice ridge right along here. It does curve around here around the corner because we skipped the chain two but then you have this nice corner here being formed, which will continue to get squared off as we go. 
So go ahead and finish this all the way around. This is what your piece should look like after you've completed 14 rounds. I hope you enjoy this nice, nice raised texture all along the perimeter. Okay, so let me give you the stitch counts. At the end of this round, you should have a total of 136 stitches, and that is 27 across the short edges. Now, especially where the join was over here, I, I'm going to take this apart and show this to you again, but make sure you have 27 stitches here, 27 across the bottom, and along the long sides, you should have a total of 41 stitches. And of course, you have those four chained to corners as well. Okay, so let me pull this back for you and show you how I joined this. Now the last single crochet that I crocheted was right here. And this again is the chain one where we went to the back loop. And this is the first single crochet that we crocheted in that corner. So go ahead and just join with a slip stitch. Okay. After we've done that, we're ready to move on to the next row, which I'm sorry, round, which is going to be round 15, which is also uh, round one of the cable stitch. Go ahead and slip stitch to the corner, just like this. And we're going to chain one, single crochet, chain two, Add another single crochet in that chain two corner to form the corner. Okay, so now we are ready to work the cable stitch. So to begin the cable stitch, we are going to single crochet in the very next stitch. Make sure you don't accidentally omit the first single crochet along the side because sometimes this single crochet can be over the top of those loops. So make sure you pull back on these a little bit and you work that first stitch. And after we do that, we're going to, after I get my yarn out of the way, chain three, one, two, three. Then we're going to skip the next two stitches, one, two, single crochet, and that next stitch. Now we are going to turn to work in the three chains that we just crocheted. Single crochet in those, one, two, three. And notice I'm just working along the side of the chain and that's all you need to do for this. In that next stitch, we're gonna work a slip stitch. Now I'm gonna bring the yarn to the back side. Again, this is just an easier way to turn and I'm gonna pull the cable back and those two stitches that we skipped, we're gonna work single crochets in those. One, two. Let me do this a couple more times for you. Chain three, skip the next two stitches that we have not used, one, two, and then that third, go ahead and work a single crochet. Now we turn to work in the chain and we work a single crochet in each chain. One, two, three, slip stitch, bring the yarn to the back of your work and pull this cable back to reveal the two stitches that we skipped. Make sure you work through both loops of those two stitches. And there you have your cables. Let's do this one more time. One, two, three. Skip the next two stitches. Single crochet in the next. And now we turn to work in the chains. One single crochet in each chain. After we do that, we're going to work a slip stitch in that next stitch. Bring the yarn to the back of your work. You can pull this cable back, reveal those two stitches, 
and single crochet in the two stitches that you skipped. I have worked these cables all the way across and I have a total of 13 of these. Let me count these with you. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And you should have one stitch left at the end of this side. Right there, I've crocheted that single crochet in that next stitch. And then we're going to work the corner, single crochet, chain two, and another single crochet. Go ahead and turn to work along this next side. Again, starting in the very first stitch, single crochet, chain three, skip two, single crochet in that next stitch, and then again, turning to work in the chain. One, two, three single crochets, and then a slip stitch, etc. So go ahead and bring this to the back, and then we're gonna work this all the way across, and then again, working in the two stitches that we skipped. So go ahead and work these across the shorter side. After working these across the short side, I have a total of eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cables. We have two stitches left, so go ahead and work a single crochet in each of those two stitches. And then now we work the chain two corner with a single crochet, chain two, and a single crochet worked in the same space. So go ahead and repeat that across the next two sides and I will show you the join at the end of this round. But let's go ahead and take a look at how beautiful these are looking so far. So just for the record, as far as extra stitches in addition to the cables, you should have two extra stitches and then that does not include the chain two corner with those two single crochets and you should have one extra stitch and then you have the corner on the long side. Okay, so now we're ready to work row two of the cable and what we're going to do for that is we're going to go ahead and slip stitch to that chain two corner. Then we're going to chain one and we are going to turn to work along the back side. Okay, so now remember we had three stitches, so let's go ahead and we're gonna work single crochets in those three stitches. One, two, and three. Okay, so those are those three standalone single crochets, the one that was part of the chain two, the, the single crochet, chain two, single crochet corner right here, and then the two additional stitches. Now working behind the cables themselves, we are going to work it this way. We're going to work two single crochets in that next stitch, and then as you pull back on this a little bit to get the single crochet where it was attached, we're gonna crochet one single crochet. Here's the next cable. We're going to work two single crochets in that stitch and then one after pulling back on this a little bit one in that one so we're going to do this behind each of the cables one two single crochets in the next stitch and then one in the next so essentially when you're working behind these cables you're going to have three single crochets behind the cable. Now that does not include the three stitches right here that we worked at the beginning that were independent of the cables. So let's just go ahead and I'll work this across the row with you. Two and then one. Two single crochets in that next spot, next stitch, and then one two single crochets in the next, and then one. 
two single crochets in the next, and then one single crochet. And we have one more cable to work behind. So we work the two and then one so that we have three stitches behind that. Okay, now we have one additional. Let's just look at the front and just to verify. Okay, so now we actually work two. We're going to work a single crochet in the very first single crochet where this cable will start, started, and then one in that chain uh, two corner. And then we get to the chain two corner. We're going to work a single crochet, chain two, and another single crochet. And then we're going to turn. And let's look at the at this before the cable. We have one, two stitches. So working across the long end of this, we're going to work one, two single crochets. Those are the ones that were independent of the cables. Now we're working behind the cables. And again, we work two single crochets and then one single crochet. So we have a total of three behind each of these cables. So go ahead and work this all the way around. And I'll work the next one. Two and then one. So we have three. Let's look at the end of this and let's look at it with the look at it with the front side facing. So at the end of this, after these three stitches behind this cable, you're going to have one stitch here and one stitch here. So make sure you work two independent stitches and then you work the chain two turning chain, which you'll work the single crochet, chain two, and a single crochet. So go ahead and work that all the way around. After working the chain two corner, we're going to join with a slip stitch to that first stitch of the round. And let's go ahead and turn and take a look at what we have after 16 rounds. Okay, so now the next two rounds are going to be repeating the cable rounds again. So let's go ahead and chain one and we're going to slip stitch again our way to the chain two corner. I'm going to chain one and work the corner, single crochet, chain two and single crochet again in that same space. And now working along the long side, we are just going to continue working the cable stitch. This is cable stitch row one. Work it to the next corner and I'll show you how it ends at the other side. Okay, I've worked this across the long side all the way to the corner and notice you have one, two stitches that we're going to skip. Let's go ahead and do the chain three and we'll go ahead and make the, the single crochet in the chain two corner as you form that last cable. And we're going to go ahead and work that last cable with you. Just so that I'm clear. Go ahead and bring the yarn to the back. Single crochet in those next two those two stitches that we skipped and now we are going to form the corner working in the same place again. Single crochet, chain two, and single crochet and then we will begin the cabling on the short side. Okay, I wanted to just give you a brief look at that. So we now have 15 cables along the long side. So again, we had 13 cables in the first set of cables, and then the second set, we're going to have 15. So go ahead and work the cable stitch along the short side, and I will show you the end of this side. As we work across the end of the short sides, we're going to skip the next two, and then single crochet, 
in that last stitch along the side. And I'm going to go ahead and finish this with you. Single crochet in each of those chains. Slip stitch in the next stitch, bring the yarn to the back, and working in those two skip stitches. And that brings us to the chain two corner. So go ahead and work a single crochet, chain two, and a single crochet in that corner. And now we're ready to, again, repeat working along the long edge and then the short edge. So go ahead and finish this round and I will show you the connection at the end. This row ends by working in that last single crochet as you crochet the last cable and then we are going to join with a slip stitch to the first single crochet of that chain two corner and go ahead and slip stitch your way to the chain two corner after that and then we're going to turn chain one and we are going to single crochet in the first stitch for that chain two corner single crochet and then we are going to continue to work two single crochets in the next space and then one because now you're working directly behind the cable. So just to be clear we have a single crochet in the one single crochet here is the chain two space way over here we have not worked that yet we will work that at the very end of this round and then we begin working the two single crochets and then the one behind each cable. So go ahead and work these all the way around. And as you work row 18, you should have 35 single crochets across the short sides and you should have 49 single crochets across the long side. And that is including the chain two corners. And that's a total of 168 stitches in this round. In an attempt to help you to keep the stitch count accurate as you work along the long edge, make sure that you don't accidentally add a stitch because you've already worked in it right here, but it's tempting to add an additional stitch here. You don't need to put one there. Just go ahead on to the next stitch that has not been worked as you work the long sides and then go to the corners where you work the single crochet, chain two, and a single crochet. You just want to try to be as clear as possible and do double check that you have 49 stitches on the long sides and 35 stitches along the short side. And I'll just go ahead and start the short side for you again. You have one stitch here, which is a standalone stitch, and then you're working behind the cable after that where you work the two single crochets and then the one. So just wanted to try to make that as clear as possible so that we keep on our accurate stitch count. Working the final corner of this round, single crochet, chain two, and then another single crochet. And then we're going to join with a slip stitch. And let's go ahead and turn to have the front side facing. Let's take a look at where we are. Right now we are going to work a low back rib, but before we do that, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and chain one and we are going to slip stitch our way to that chain two corner. After slip stitching to that corner, go ahead and chain one and then we are going to turn with the back side facing us once again. Now we are going to be working in these stitches and it's a little tricky because this is a single crochet here in the chain two corner and then this is the join. And so we are going to be working the low back rib so we're going to have, um, we're actually going to skip this stitch because this chain is going to fall in front of that stitch. So we're going to go to the next stitch which is right here and that will be our first slip stitch like that. You can see how this other stitch lays in front of this stitch and we are going to work that slip stitch all the way around 
just like we did before. And let's go ahead and take a little pause here and do what's very important and mark these chain two corners once again. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm taking the time with the camera running because, yes, this is as important as that. Um, just want to be a good example here of how to do this in as painless a way as possible. Because these chain two corners are very difficult to find, but then by connecting them to a stitch holder, you can hold them out and see them quite readily. No. Okay, there we go. So now I'm just going to continue around working the low back rib, low back ridge, however you'd like that to be said. And we're going to work in that remaining loop. I'm going to go ahead and turn. We should have the back side facing as we work this. Whoops, let's just get the one loop around. And remember, as we go around, once we come to the chain two, we are not going to work in the chain two. We're going to skip this just like we did before. So we would work our last slip stitch here, skip the chain two, and then go immediately into the next loop of that next stitch going down the other side. So making sure that you skip these chain twos again, just like I showed you a few rows back. So go ahead and complete that round. This is round 19. Now I've come to the end of this round and we do have our chain two corner to skip and I'm going to join with a slip stitch in that first chain, which also, as you remember, lays in front of that first stitch. So we work a slip stitch. And before we do a chain one, we have a color change to manage. I am going to go to the next lighter color, and this is color number 48 of the Cascade Anthem yarn. So let's go ahead and get this ready. And we're going to work a slip stitch. And notice again, I've skipped the chain two space here. So we're gonna do a slip stitch. And let's go ahead and chain one. And now we are going to turn and it's time for us to make a color change. We're going to go to color number two. Um, before we do that, let's go ahead and pull this a little bit, a little bit tighter there. And I'm going to make the color chains change by pulling this through like this. And I am going to turn to have the back side facing once again. So now we're ready to begin working in the remaining loop and we're going to work 37 stitches. So I'm going to start in the first stitch here. There we go. It's a little tricky because of the join, but we can't make sure we don't omit that stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and work these stitches again. This is the, the lower back ridge and this is row two of that stitch. And I do have the back side facing. I'm going to go ahead and work these across. Now, as I'm working across, I am only going to have 36 stitches because the 37th stitch is going to be in the chain two corner, which I've already taken my marker, my stitch marker out, but it's right here. So we're going to add another one in here, in here at the end of this round. So you need to keep that in mind as you count your stitches because it's really easy to get off on your stitch count. Now, if there's a chance that your stitch count is off by one or two stitches around the sides or, you know, either, either side of this particular project, there is an easy solution. You can always add additional stitches in the corner. You can add up to two stitches on each direction of the corner should you need to do that in order to get your stitch count even for the next stitch. That's not going to be um, something that's going to uh, hurt the design whatsoever. So if your stitch count, if you found that you've gotten off maybe during the cable stitching, which is very easy to do, you can just 
add or even take a stitch away from the row if you need to simply by skipping maybe the last stitch or if you need to add in a stitch you can just add them in the chain two corner okay I, I know I'm repeating myself but I don't want you to feel like this is a lost cause if the stitch count gets off just a little bit I've tried to be very deliberate to give you as many stitch counts as I can so that this is a joyful journey and you can always check the written pattern should you decide to get that and uh, you know download that and check off the rows as we go after working these across I've gone ahead and worked the stitch in that turning chain and I'm going to chain two and then another single crochet right where that stitch marker is let's go ahead and remove that so it doesn't cause us to miss out on any stitches so now we're working across the long side and let's go ahead and working in the remaining loop single crochet in each of those stitches across until the corner and then again when you get to the corner work the single crochet chain two single crochet and don't forget to double check your stitch count after you complete the stitches along that edge and then go ahead and finish the rest and I will show you the join after working this all the way around we are going to end with a slip stitch worked in that first stitch of the round and notice I did bring the color change in the knot to the back side. Now let's go ahead and turn and I want to show you how nicely this color change works with this. Okay so we have that completed. Let's go ahead and chain one and now we are going to slip stitch to the corner. So after slip stitching to the chain two corner we're going to chain two and for the corner now we're going to work a double crochet, chain two and another double crochet for that chain two corner and now we are going to begin working the honeycomb stitch and in order to begin we're going to start on the long side of this project and we're going to work one double crochet in that first stitch so after working a double crochet in that first stitch we are going to begin the honeycomb stitch in the following manner we're going to skip the next two stitches one two and the third single crochet we're going to work a front post treble just by working the hook around the body of the stitch and then we're going to make another treble and around the next stitch these are called front post trebles now this is where it could get a little bit tricky but hang with me it's not as bad as it may seem we're going to work front post trebles in this stitch and in this stitch but we're going to work them behind these two stitches in the following manner bring your hook into the hole right here and then we're going to work it around the next or that first skipped single crochet and then we're going to bring it into the back side into this hole again and we're going to do the next stitch if you have trouble locating them you can use the nerve endings in your fingers to find those stitches okay so that's half of the first honeycomb or at least the base of it skip the next two stitches front post treble in each of the next two stitches now working in front of those last two stitches we're going to front post treble in this stitch and then in this stitch and in the next just like so and so now we have the foundation for one treble and then we're going to come along and eventually close up this arch over here um, in two more rows and then you'll understand why this is called the honeycomb skip the next two stitches we're basically going to repeat what we just did with the last eight stitches so I'll do this for you one more time and then front post treble in the next stitch as well 
And then once again, working behind these two stitches, we're going to front post treble here and then in here. So coming in to the hole behind, right there, and front post treble. And then again, coming in again, and we work that second stitch. Just to show you how easy it is to work these post stitches around a single crochet. Skip the next two stitches, front post treble, and the next two stitches. Working in front of these two stitches, front post treble, and the two stitches that were just skipped. Okay, so let me pause and show this to you. So what's going to happen with these honeycombs, they're going to go down and then up, down and then up. As you work across, make sure that you are making these big double-sided V's as you go. If they are crossed in the wrong direction, then you're going to want to do double check that. So go ahead and work this across the side and I'll show you how this ends um, to the corner. Once you get to the corner, you should have two stitches left along this side. And this, are, this goes for both of the long sides. And then when you get to the corner, work a double crochet, chain two. Let's go ahead and turn 90 degrees. And another double crochet worked in that chain two space. Now working across the short side, we're going to start by working two double crochets, one in each of the first two stitches, and then we're going to go back to working the honeycomb. So skip these next two stitches, and again, front post treble, the next two stitches, and then working behind those two stitches, etc., just the way we did along the long side. So go ahead and work the honeycomb row one along the short side of this square. So after working this across the short side of the rectangle, we should have one, two, three stitches left. Go ahead and work double crochets in those stitches. One, two, three, and then again work that chain two corner with a double crochet, chain two, and a double crochet. And then go ahead and repeat that again for the long side. But before we do that, let me just show you. And looking at the long side, just make sure that they are they are going down, up, down, up, down, up, across, and you should have a total of six on the long sides. So go ahead and work this around, and I'll show you the join at the end and how to begin the next round with the honeycomb. After working this all the way around, we double crochet in the last three stitches. Make sure you have the same number of stitches on each end. And let me go ahead and give you the stitch count. You should have 39 stitches on the short sides and 53 stitches on the long side for this particular round, giving you a total of 184 stitches. After we do that, we're going to join with the slip stitch to that first stitch of the round, which was forming the corner. And again, do be careful that this stitch, the uh, chain two does not count as a stitch in this stitch count. Okay, go ahead, chain two, and we're going to turn with the back side facing us. So now to start round 22, which is also round two of the honeycomb. Remember now, this is a chain and make sure if you're not sure, you can always look at the front and see that that is a turning chain. We don't want to treat that as a stitch. So we're going to half double crochet in the standalone double crochets of this round. So whenever you see these extra stitches that aren't part of the honeycomb just work a half double crochet and when you have the honeycomb stitches we're going to work back post 
double crochets over all of those and make sure that you work over eight of these per honeycomb. Okay, so just back post, double crochets over those stitches and again, half double crochets in the double crochets that are stand alone stitches. So go ahead and work that all the way around. When you get to the corners, you can work a half double crochet, chain two, half double crochet, but I'll work the first corner with you. So after working those half double crochets, I come to the standalone stitches. They're not part of the honeycomb. Work half double crochets in each of those. Now we get to the corner and we're going to work two half double crochets, chain two, and then two more half double crochets. And that's going to be every time you get to the corner. So make sure you work two half doubles, chain two, two half doubles for each corner as you work this round. Now I've come to the last corner and I'm just going to work two half double crochets, chain two, and two more half double crochets. Then I'm going to work a half double crochet in that last stitch, which was one of the stitches in the corner, and then a slip stitch to the top of the first stitch of the round. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like with the front side facing, and you should have a total of 43 stitches along the short side and the long side. You should have a total of 57 stitches. That would be a total of 200 stitches in the round. So now we're ready. Let's go ahead and give that a chain and we are having the front side facing and we're going to slip stitch our way to the corner. This is very important. Okay, get to that chain two corner. After slip stitching our way to the corner, go ahead and chain two. Now we're going to work double crochets with the front side facing for this stitch. And the main reason is having to do with the height of the stitches that we're crocheting. So we're going to crochet two double crochets, chain two, and two more double crochets. I hope this is not too confusing, um, but I want to be very specific. When you have the front side of your work facing, we will be working with taller stitches. So in order to match the height, we need to use double crochets with the front side facing. With the back side facing, we'll be using shorter stitches. When you work back post double crochets, it equals the height of a half double crochet worked in the regular loops of stitches. So that's why we are doing that. So you need to be careful which stitch you use when. So now we, again, front side facing, we're going to use double crochets in these stitches that aren't being utilized in the honeycomb stitch right now. And again, this number will vary depending on which corner you're working on and which side. So we're just going to work those. Now when you get to the honeycomb portion, we're going to skip two stitches, front post treble in the next two stitches, working in front of these two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped. And again, skip two front post treble in the next two stitches. And working behind the last two stitches that you just worked, we're going to front post treble in this stitch here and here, the two that were just skipped. And again, use your thumb and uh, fingers to help you find where these stitches are located. Again, coming back in behind these, and we work this stitch next, right like that. 
Let's pause and take a look. And you can see now that this has closed in and it looks like a honeycomb. And we're going to do this again. Skip the next two. Front post treble. And the next two stitches. Working in front of those last two stitches. Front post treble. And the two stitches that I just skipped. And the second part of this, we skip two front post treble, the next two stitches, working behind these two stitches, we're going to front post treble here and then here, the two stitches that we just skipped. Okay, so now we have two honeycombs completed. I want you to see how how these look and it's very important as you complete each side to give it a visual check to make sure that you have crossed these in the proper way before going on to the next side. So go ahead and work that all the way around. After working all the way around I'm going to join with a slip stitch to the first stitch of the round and let's go ahead and slip stitch our way to the chain two corner and before I turn let's just take a look at how this is coming out and I'm going to go ahead and give you the stitch count this is at the end of round 23 you should have 47 stitches total on the short sides and 61 stitches total on each of the long sides, that's 216 stitches all the way around. So now we're going to go ahead and do that chain two, and we're going to turn with the back side facing, and again we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stitches worked on this side because again this is the chain, chain two, and that does not count as a stitch. So working half double crochets, and I'm going to work over the slip stitching that we slip stitched to the corner with. So one, two, and then we're going to skip the chain. And then in the next stitch, three, four, and five, six, and seven. Those are the standalone stitches that are not part of the honeycomb. And just like we did two rows or two rounds before, we're just going to work back post double crochets over each of those honeycomb post stitches. And again, make sure that you have four of these for every of the crossings or eight back post double crochets for each honeycomb that you work across. So go ahead and work this all the way around. And remember, when you get to the chain two corners, we're working half double crochets now. So it would be two half doubles, chain two, two half doubles for that chain two corner. At the end of this round, we come to the corner and we need to form that corner with two half double crochets, chain two, and turn and two more half double crochets. Remembering that this here is the turning chain and does not count as a stitch. And we join with a slip stitch just like that. And let's go ahead and turn to see what we have. And you can see the honeycombs are coming out quite nicely. And this is going to look even better once we work another few rounds of this. Okay, so now what we are going to do going forward is we are going to repeat rows, let's see, rows 21, which is the row here, 21, 22, 23, and 24, the four um, rounds. Now doing so, we're going to have slightly different numbers because as we begin, well let me go ahead and 
let's go ahead and uh, start. So let's go ahead and begin row 25 by slip stitching our way to the chain two corner. We're going to chain two, one, two, and we're back to working double crochets for these corners. We're going to work two double crochets, chain two, and let's turn 90 degrees, and then we will make two more double crochets in that same place. Now this is where it can get a little bit tricky, but very doable. Each of these honeycombs has eight stitches in it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's based on an eight count repeat. So what we're going to do is we're going to count backwards from these extra stitches that are not yet a honeycomb. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have eight stitches along this side that is going to become another honeycomb along the side. And this is how we're going to do that. We're going to skip the next two stitches, one, two, and we're going to front post treble in the next two. Working behind those two stitches, we're going to work front post trebles in those two stitches that we skipped. And we're basically going to repeat uh, round one of the honeycomb, which would be the same as round 21, but we're going to have more stitches in this round. Okay, we're going to skip the next two stitches, front post treble in the next two stitches, Working in front of those last two stitches, we front post treble. Well, let's go ahead and wrap the hook twice. We do front post treble in those two stitches that we just skipped. Let's pause a minute and look back. So what we are doing is we are adding an additional honeycomb and then as you can see, we continue by skipping the next two stitches and then continuing on working over this honeycomb. Again, it's working the row that looks just like this, which will form the V's going down and then up all the way across. After we work across, we're going to continue. After we complete this honeycomb here, we are going to be working over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stitches here and we're going to work the honeycomb. Now you do have an additional stitch on this side that we need to work in. So make sure that you work in this side, uh, this stitch on this side, and then as we turn to work along the other side of this uh, rectangle, we're gonna count backwards again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stitches. So in this case, you will work a half I'm sorry, a double crochet in this stitch first. Once you complete the chain two corner, we work a stitch here, and then we begin the honeycomb over these eight stitches. Okay, and then the same along this side. After we complete working the honeycomb row one over these stitches, then we're going to count eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We will work a honeycomb over these eight stitches. And then you have one, two stitches left over. You're going to make two, one double crochet here, one double crochet there, and then you work the chain, uh, the uh, work in the chain two corner with your double crochets. And then on this side, you'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stitches. You're gonna use all of those stitches for the honeycomb on this side. So go ahead and work this all the way around and you will be having additional honeycombs like on the short side, instead of instead of four honeycombs, you're going to have six. And on this side, 
instead of six honeycombs, you're actually going to have eight on the long side. So go ahead and work honeycombs row, or the honeycomb row one through four, or repeat rows 21 through 24. Um, but again, your numbers will be slightly different. If you need to look at stitch support, again, the numbers will be slightly more because of the additional honeycombs, but if you want to review, I'll put a little time mark across the bottom of the screen where you can go back and start at row. Okay, so go ahead and do that, and then I'll show you what I have. All right, let me show you what I have. So we have the original honeycomb here that we worked together, and then we repeated it here, again, adding the additional honeycombs as the number of stitches, which is um, a multiple of eight, became available. And then I went beyond that again and repeated rows, I'm sorry, rounds one, two, and three of yet a third honeycomb. So if you're looking at this from where it meets color number one, so you have one, two, and then I worked one, two, three rounds with the color number two. So let me go ahead and show you where I've joined the yarn. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this out just a bit and I'm going to go ahead and make the yarn change to Cascade Yarns Anthem color number 49. This is just a slightly darker hue than the one we've been using. So I'm going to go ahead and join that and I'm going to work round number four of the honeycomb and then I will give you an assignment after that. Now let me also take the time to make mention that as I've as I've added these additional additional um, rounds with the honeycomb, I want to show you the corner and how one was added here and then additional honeycomb was added here. So let me go ahead and give you the stitch count. Right now we have 79 stitches across the short side and we have 93 stitches across the long side. That gives us a total of 344 uh, stitches in the round. And this again is round 31 where we stopped here. So I'm gonna go ahead and work round 32 again after I do my color change with this other yarn. And then I will show you what to do after that. Well, I hope you enjoyed video number one of the Throw of Grace. Please join me for video number two, where we will continue working on this piece. God bless. Bye-bye.